All right, welcome. So in this, I'm gonna be showing you how you can build a quick full stack app with Dolly. What we're gonna be building is on the right hand side here. The tech stack is gonna be just a plain vanilla HTML. We're gonna be using CSS, JavaScript on the front end. We're not gonna be using any frameworks. On the back end, we're gonna be using Node.js and we're gonna be able to do this in probably less than 15 minutes. So hopefully you enjoy this and without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna dive right into building out our front end. So the first thing to note is we're gonna have a index.html, an index.js, and a style CSS. Once we have that, if you wanna have the same setup that I do, I'm using the live server extension in VS Code, which will just allow me to, uh, when I save the document, be able to see the changes within Chrome on the right-hand side here. So we're gonna go into the index HTML and we're going to include the Bootstrap CDN for the CSS only. So we're not gonna need the JavaScript uh, CDN file for this. We're just gonna be leveraging the Bootstrap styles. And the, the large reason for that is the focus on this is not going to be CSS. We're just gonna leverage a, a library to handle the styles for us. Now with that being said, we're going to have a very small style sheet for some tiny customizations that you might wanna add. So in this instance, uh, we're gonna have a style sheet just to change the background with a simple dark mode linear gradient. Now we're gonna add some containers and some utility classes that are just gonna wrap our app just to sort of make it structured and, and look how, how we had in the example there. And once we have that, the main pieces of our app are going to be the input and then the gallery. So the input is going to be the simple text box where it says enter Dolly query. And then we're going to have the submit button to submit the form. And then we'll have the label that's associated with the input as you see. And then once we have those, we're gonna just go down, add the gallery that's right below the form and then finally, we're gonna include our JavaScript. So we'll hop right over to the style CSS. And like I said, it's very simple what we're adding here, but the file's here in case you wanna add some further things or tweak it as you see fit. So within our index.js on the front end, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna cache the form and gallery elements. This will just make it a little bit cleaner for us to interact as we write the rest of our code. So we're gonna create an event listener on the form. So when the form is submitted, it's gonna run through all this code. We're gonna cache the image query within the event listener because that value is obviously gonna change as you query different images. We're gonna prevent the default behavior of the form so we don't want the form to actually submit and refresh the browser. So that's why we're adding that. And then we're going to clear the DOM element of any values. So as you type it out, uh, if we don't add this, you'd have to backspace each time. So just what you'd expect when you're, you're submitting this type of, of thing in this type of application. So next we're gonna encode the URL. So why we're doing this, we'll see in the next portion here, is we're gonna be adding a spinner. And within that um, uh, uh, place where we're adding that spinner, we have uh, a wrapper and it has a data attribute of gallery image. So why we're adding that is at the end, once the image gets loaded in from the server, is it's going to look again to that encoded data gallery image and it's going to replace it. So the next thing we're gonna do is append the item. So initially it's gonna be a spinner, and once we get a response from the server, it will be the image. We're gonna add this container, this gallery item, to the, the gallery. Then from there, we're gonna make a post request. And the post request is gonna to be to localhost 3000. We're gonna set up an endpoint on the back end that has the route of API slash prompt. Uh, what we're going to actually send over to the server is going to be the model name, which is Dolly, and then it's gonna be the prompt, which is the user's query. And then from there, we're just going to uh, take the response and convert it to JSON, so we'll be able to interact with it since we're using a fetch re request. 
So once we've done that, we're gonna head down here. And I added a condition here in case you wanna build on this app. So once you're familiar with using the backend of the OpenAI API, you'll be able to build um, with their GPT-3 model if you choose. So I added a few conditions here and there, so you'll be able to easily expand this if you so choose. So if the response from the server has the type of image, what we're first gonna do is we're going to, again, encode that query. And based on the encoded query is we're going to reach for that uh, element in the DOM, and then we're going to replace the response with the image URL, because the data key will be an image URL, and then the alt text will be the prompt. So we're the prompts are going to make a 360, so it's going to go to the server and then come back. And part of that is to use for alt text, but you might also want to maybe add the title below the image, potentially, if you wanted that sort of look. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. And then once we've saved that, we're gonna head over to our back end. So I have this in another VS Code uh, workspace and another folder. So just make a, a new empty folder. And then once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and npm init dash y. And the reason that we're doing this is because we're going to be installing a few packages. So we're gonna be installing Express, OpenAI, Body Parser, and .env. So go ahead and install those. And the next one, what we're gonna do is we're going to initialize a couple files. So an index.js and then a .env. And then since I already have those um, within the, the directory here, I'm not gonna click enter, but um, just so you have uh, the same setup, uh, just go ahead and do that. And then from there, we're going to go over to the OpenAI API. So we're going to go up to the top right-hand corner where our initial is, and we're gonna click View API Keys. And then once you've done that, you're gonna create a new secret, and you're gonna copy that over. So once you've copied that over, we're gonna go into our .env. So since I already have my API key within my .env, I'm just gonna show you within this .env example, but you should be putting yours within the .env. So we're gonna have um, the uh, .env say openai underscore api underscore key, and then you'll paste in your key right after the equal sign. Make sure you don't put it in a string or, or parentheses or anything like that, just paste it right in. And then once you've done that, save the file, close it up, and then we're gonna hop over to the index.js. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna require our dependencies that we installed. So we have OpenAI, that's how we interact with their API. We have Express, which we're gonna be using to establish our server. We have Body Parser, which works in tandem with Express. So Body Parser will handle the post request when it comes in and be able to uh, get it in a format where, where we'll be able to parse it properly. And then from there, we're going to uh, require .env so we can access our environment variable. And then from there, we're just going to instantiate our Express app. After we instantiated it, we're gonna make sure to configure cores. This is something that's easy to forget. You know, uh, a lot of times you'll set up a application, you'll set up the back end, and then you realize as soon as you get to the front end that, oh, you have a cores error and you need to include cores. So we're gonna include that early on here. Then once we have that, we're going to set up our endpoint. So like I mentioned, it's gonna to be to API slash prompt. And then we're just gonna log out uh, the body. So what comes in from the front end. And then again, this is where we could build out. So uh, there's a condition here to check if it's Dolly. And then if it's Dolly, we're going to take the prompt and we're gonna pass the prompt within our prompt Dolly asynchronous function. So in a moment, we'll see what that looks like. Essentially, if it's successful, it's going to return the URL of an image as a string. And then once we have that, we're going to send it back uh, within the data key. We're gonna specify that it's an image, and then we're going to send back the prompt as well, which we, we saw that we are gonna use for the alt text. 
So from there, we'll start our server. We'll configure our OpenAI API, and then we'll set up our asynchronous prompt dolly function. So just to break this down, we have a try catch to handle any errors that could come through. We're going to query it. We're going to specify the size based on uh, 256 by 256. You could also go up on this. Um, feel free to if you want. I have this set just to use uh, fewer credits um, within their, their API that they give you. And then once we have that, we're just going to go ahead, ahead and save it. And then we're going to start our server. So we see the servers running on port 3000. And now if I go over to our front end and I write a query, let's just say a cat that looks like sushi. We see over here on our back end that the query came through, the model, the prompt, and then the image comes through. So there's a cat that looks like sushi. We can specify dog, cat again, horse hamster, etc. So obviously you can make some more interesting queries from that, but that's basically it. So hopefully this is a boilerplate to get you started using uh, the OpenAI API and Dolly and, and building your own application. So I'm curious to see what you build and hopefully you enjoyed this. So if you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and until the next one.